What's going happening? on? Nate, what's going on, Nate? Hi, guys. How goes it? It's my first con, so I'm sweating. Oh, I didn't apply. Yeah, my That's first. That's amazing. Sorry, we're going to adjust Please. for you. I didn't apply enough um, deodorant this morning. That's oh. lesson one. That's my Comic Con hot tip for everyone. You get well, someone was handing out like free Febreze and deodorant to anyone who needed it. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. I should have taken some of that. All right, next year. <laughs> you can never have enough. I know. Um, talk to us about your character in the series and. Yeah, I'm, I got really lucky. I'm not a character in the comic, um, so I didn't have that burden that a lot of actors have of fans having a very specific attachment to a character. Character, um, So I was able to sort of create it on my own, and I just took the words of Chris Rogers, who's sitting over there, who wrote a majority of the scripts with the writing staff. Um, so the character's fun. I, I, this face never plays the heavy. This face is always sort of like, you know, the awkward friend or like the frightened technician. So to play a guy who like knows what he's doing and like manages robots that are like, you know, 60 feet tall and are like helping these kids go on their journey. Um, I'm sort of like benevolent, like there's a, a, he's a bad guy and then he's a good guy and then he's a bad guy again. Uh, so it's, it was, um, it was a bit of a mishmash, which made it really fun. Every episode is very different for this character. Um, he leaves the girls behind, he saves the girls. So that was really fun to play on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Were you familiar with the graphic novels? I was familiar with it, but I hadn't read it. Um, my brother is a serious, hardcore comic book guy. And he's like, Paper Girls, oh my God, Brian K. Vaughn, holy crap. Um, so I got a little nervous in the audition. Um, because I was like, oh, this is a big deal. This is this is a revered comic um, that fans like really love and adore. So I, I felt a little anxious, but have but again, playing a character that wasn't in the comic, I felt like a little less scary. Um, but I know Brian, I know Saga, I know Why the Last Man. You know, like he's created some of these incredible stories, and he, I, di I didn't realize he was so whoever he is. I didn't realize he was so young. Um, so comic fans have like another, you know. 40 years of his work to look forward to, which is so exciting. Yeah. With all the preparation that an actor has to do to bring a character to life, and since you are playing an original character, did you have anything that you created internally to kind of inform who this character is with like a backstory or anything like I that? I try not to. I try to just take the words that are on the page in front of me and sort of forget about everything else. There are a lot of actors who spend weeks preparing and knowing everything about every corner of their lives. And I tried that when I was younger. I feel like that's a younger actor's game. And it wasn't helping me, it was only making me more anxious that I wasn't remembering everything. There's so many moments where you don't need that stuff. You just have the words on the page. I'm, I came up in theater, so you know when you're doing plays, there is no, you know, you're doing Shakespeare, the playwright isn't around. Like, there's no changing it, there's no improvising. You stick to the text. The text is your map to telling this great story. So I just tried to honor Chris's words and the rest of the writing staff. Um, and preparation was like, very minimal. Memorize, memorize your lines, be on time, hit your mark, and get out of there, basically. That's <laughs> how, I, how, how I operate. So your, your character's pretty erratic in the show. You know, you, yeah. you, you have a couple loopy moments where you, you can't trust anybody. You, yeah. you have a lot of lost in this. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, you know, I see the emotion on your face. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, where did this guy draw this? Because this looks real. You well, know. you know, on my first day shooting, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, one little like insider piece of uh, uh, my first day of shooting, and uh, most actors have to do a lot of travel. You spend a long time in hotels, as you guys are traveling everywhere to do what you do. And hotels are cool for like five, six days, but after day six, it starts to get real depressing, real lonely. Um, and that was my first day of working. That my first scene was sort of. I say goodbye to this, like the woman that I loved. She was not caught, in, she was sort of forgotten in the time race, and she's we're no longer on the same team. And I remember like sitting. I was like, I was my wife and I were in the middle of uh, planning a wedding, and uh, it was such a nightmare to do across the country. And I was in this little hotel in Chicago, and I was like, really wishing I was back home with my family. And so I channeled that in that moment where he sort of like has his breakdown in the van and punches the, the, the steering wheel in the van. That was just me venting my frustration about like being away from my poor wife while she was planning a wedding by herself, basically, is what was happening in that moment. Um, 
but yeah, location work is, is uh, it's strange. It's really strange to um, not sleep in your own bed for three months. It's just, yeah. it's bizarre. It's really, it's a, something I thought, you know, being in the industry for a while that I would have adjusted to by now, but it only gets harder. So, I, I, I try to get jobs in Los Angeles as often as I can. <laughs> No. Talk about working with the girls. I know when we work with like younger kids, we can, as adults, we get a little in our head. We've been doing this for so long, right? Did yeah. you find any inspiration or like kind of learn something? Oh, completely, that? completely. Like the passion that they would, like, you know, I, I've been doing it for a while. I'm 44, and so you get a little cynical. You start to see the limitations of the production before you see the things that celebrate about it. Because you've been burned, right? You've, you've, you've done all these jobs, you're like, oh, this is the one job, this is gonna, this, I'm gonna break through on this job. And then they don't, and they don't, or the, sh or the show doesn't work out in the way that you hope it to. Um, so you kind of come in, the older I've gotten, the more that I've come in, like with my arms crossed, a little more cynical. And to see them, the four girls, see this for the first time, and they've all worked in different ways, but not on a series like this with this kind of attention and muscle and money. Um, so to see them every day be curious about things that I'm no, I'm no longer curious about craft service. I'm no longer curious about transportation and I'm no longer curious about like special effects and like, you know, the action sequences. I'm like, where do I stand? What, who do I punch? I just well, I want to go home. And just seeing them being curious and like learning about how this stuff gets put together and made me sort of re-examine my, I guess my cynicism as an, as an older actor. So the girls like kind of peeled away my cynicism and I, I appreciated having a, a different view on this job than I would have if they weren't there. Yeah. What was the most physically demanding thing to shoot? And you can be vague if it involves spoilers. Um, the most physically demanding thing was just every day for me in the first half of the series because I had to wear a fat suit. I had to wear a, um, a belly. And, uh, and they didn't tell me that before I got there on the first day. And I was like, oh, I'm wearing this? Okay. And, uh, and it was like, you know, it was like July in the Midwest. It was very hot. And I just, like, it was like these fake pregnant bellies. I think I had like a month five. And so I just, it was like strapped on every, just disgusting, coated in sweat, it was like horrible. So like running, running in a fat suit um, is not my best look. I looked pretty, pretty vulnerable, like sprinting across a parking lot with a fake belly flapping everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, you'll see it, now you'll see it if you go back to like, I think it's episode five or six, it's like, oh yeah, there it is flapping everywhere. We had to be stuck in some tight places. The uh, robot, which was featured in, um, in one of the clips, um, they built this, you know, stomper robot head. But fitting all of us there, and we were like packed in there for hours. So that that, that was challenging for, for me, who's a, an agor, like I just, I get super claustrophobic. Uh, so that was a challenge. Um, but physically, no, I mean, they took really good care of us. The, the, the production team and all the ADs were really mindful of like not burning anyone out. So you, uh, it was pretty low maintenance. How, how was it knocking out Ali Wong and throwing her in the trunk of your car? <laughs> so we were, that was like day two. I was like, hey, nice to meet you. Zap into the trunk. Uh, amazing. Oh, she, okay. Um, but she was amazing. She, we have a lot of stuff in common. We both. She's more of a, she's a stand-up, obviously, but I, yeah. I came up in the comedy world, and so we had some comedy friends in common, so, um, but Allie's the best. It's a drive that she was in here. You guys would have loved to talk with her. She's great. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, good luck. Wrap it up. Thanks. <laughs>